G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to expect to go to school tomorrow with no friends? So I, 17 female, have a little sister, 14, who is extremely spoiled. She doesn't like to share, she hates not getting her way, and most of all, she throws tantrums when she's told no. My parents refuse to address her behaviour, so she continues to behave this way. Today was my first time in years my sister had friends over to hang out. My mum had groceries sent full of snacks that they were to share. My sister grabbed most of the snacks, and one of the girls wanted a bag of gummy bears. My sister said no, but she had three bags, so I took one from her and gave it to my friend. She dropped all of what was in her hand and started stomping her feet whining about wanting all of them. My dad made me give it back to her, so I gave her friend some fruit snacks instead. Then, they were looking for a movie to watch and the two girls agreed on one, but my sister wanted to watch a different movie. When I told her it was only fair the girls got to pick because they were her guest and she was outnumbered, she got upset and went to tell again. At this point, both girls said they wanted to go home, so my dad took them home. I told my sister as long as she continues to act this way, she will never have friends. I told her to expect to go to school tomorrow and have no friends, and she started crying, and my dad said that I was out of line. Am I the asshole for what I said? Editing to include, 1. I was not peeking, waiting for something to go wrong and say something, and 2. I was in the kitchen putting groceries away, which is literally 10 feet away from the living room, and heard her being mean to them. I was not controlling the remote for them either. And now in the comments, not the asshole. Your parents are turning her into a monster. They might force you to deal with it at home, but they can't force people outside of the family. She's going to be friendless. Not the asshole, exactly this. Keep setting those boundaries with her for your own sake. And try to prevent her from being an entitled brat. It's not really her fault, but that of the parents, as they are the ones enabling her. I agree that the parents are enabling her, I think that when the sister started acting like this as a baby or a little kid, the parents didn't want to deal with her throwing tantrums, so they just always gave in, and they continued to allow her to act that way. The sister will end up with no friends because she always wants things her way. Some people take this to adulthood with varying results. My dad and cousin are like this. My dad is over 60 and still lives off of his parents. He was forced to move out for a couple months as he wanted the rent-free apartment that my grandparents owned and provided him with to be his for free. My cousin blatantly lied that our grandma had promised him a thousand euros after graduation, asking me to back him up as I was there when this completely fabricated conversation took place. I got a warm handshake when I graduated. He threw a tantrum and got the money. Welp, at least I have my dignity. Not the asshole. If your dad can't properly parent her, you are more than welcome to. You and her friends will show her that her behaviour has repercussions. Going with not the asshole, maybe you could have phrased it better. I hope your parents see that your sister needs help. Having those kind of tantrums at 14 years old isn't normal anymore. Yes, not the asshole. In hindsight, you could have phrased it differently. This behaviour seems excessively childish for a 14 year old. I wonder if she needs to be professionally evaluated for some type of disorder. Do you know what her teachers say about her behaviours at school? And OP replies, Most of the conversations with my parents and teachers slash principal usually go something like this. Hey mum and dad, sister was being mean to other kids again. Can you talk to her? And my parents always reply with, Oh, she is just having a bad day. Or, we'll get on it. And then they bribe her with new clothes, a new electronic, Anything to get her to behave for a few weeks. They are ruining her. It's honestly probably a lost cause for you to try to correct her. You'll just be viewed as the mean older sibling and not what you are. Someone who sees this ending terribly and with her having a miserable, lonely life. And now on to the update. Before I get into this, no, my sister isn't special needs. If she were, this would have been a completely different situation. It isn't a grand update, but to answer the most asked questions, 
Yes, my sister did go to school, and the two girls didn't want to talk to her, and one girl apparently posted about my sister on Snapchat and told everyone about how she acted, which caused other kids to make fun of her. And that... This is to those of you who threw a fuss at me for being nosy, or parenting my sister for trying to get my sister to chill out, caused my parents to ground me for not, and I quote, controlling her so her friends didn't leave. Lol? Anyways, a nice Redditor got in contact with me and helped me figure out a way to talk to my parents about getting therapy as long as it was religious based, so they agreed to my sister getting therapy but they are not too keen on the idea of family therapy. I don't think there is anything else to cover, so yeah, thank you to those who gave me advice and to everyone else for the kind words. It means a lot, really. And now in the comments, WTF? Why did you get called out originally for telling her the truth, then getting called out for not controlling her? OP, I hope that when you turn 18 you go far, far away from all of this. It sounds toxic and skewed towards favouring your sister, which is unfair to you. You deserve better. Much, much better. My parents used to do that to me. The fun part? She was the oldest, but I should have known better than to let her. Some parents are just crazy. I had the same problem. My sister is four years older. Once she was using a plug-in radio in the bathroom. I got yelled at for letting her do it, because I know better. Excuse me? Age difference? She's not mentally incompetent. My mother just couldn't bring herself to correct the golden child. Wait, what? Your dad gave her all the snacks when she threw a tantrum over snacks? Your dad drove the friends home when she threw a second tantrum over the movie, and somehow you were meant to control her when her father didn't. He can F right off with trying to pin his lack of parenting on you. None of this was your fault. I would tap out of trying to help any of them with her behavior. You were not responsible for her. OP replies, Yeah, I told my mum what dad did, and she just scoffed. It's always been like this and always will be. I'm out of here soon, I'm not worried about it anymore, just keeping to myself from now on. Thank you. Take care, OP. It's hard to be in the position you have been put in, but you can't control other people, nor can you change them. Your sister will change when she needs to, but you don't have to wait till then to love your life. All the best. At this point, OP, it's time to start staying out of it and letting your sister suffer the consequences of her own behaviour. She'll catch on soon enough if she wants to regain her friends, but no point in you getting grounded any more times. OP says, that's the plan. I'm gonna let whatever happens from here on out fall on my parents because I'm tired of being at fault every single time. I really hope therapy helps my sister and that she'll come around sooner than later. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for giving my fiancé an ultimatum about inviting his sister to our wedding? My sister-in-law and I have never got along. She's the kind of person to always do things on the expense of others. She's the kind of person to say or do something hurtful, but then claim that it's a joke. For example, some time ago, I had bought a bag. My sister-in-law was always saying how she was jealous that I had that bag. She kept joking about how she'll throw wine on it, because if she can't have nice things, then I can't either. At some point, she actually threw wine on my bag, totally ruining it. Another time on my birthday party, I was wearing a red velvet vintage dress, which used to be my mother's, and it has sentimental value. Throughout the whole party, my sister-in-law kept joking how she would throw me in the pool with a chlorine and ruin my dress. She then told me not to worry and she was joking. I was on guard about this, and so was my fiancé. She actually caught me off guard at some point, and tried to throw me into the pool, but my friend pulled me, and I didn't fall. I want to clarify that in every single situation my fiancé has fought with her, and has defended me. After she tried that stunt with the dress and the pool, he gave her a warning that the next time she does something like that, she is out of our lives. She insisted she is just joking. Now, she is joking that she will wear white to our wedding, and she might accidentally throw wine on my wedding dress. Having had enough of her jokes, I told my fiancé that she is no longer invited, and that I can't trust her since she always jokes, but then goes along with her plan. He reassured me that she wouldn't do it this time because he gave her a warning. I told her I can't trust her and I don't feel comfortable with her there. He then got mad that I implied his sister is not in our wedding. 
He told me, Do you hear yourself? She's my sister, and you expect me to uninvite her just like that? I told him I have valid reasons, and he thinks that she won't do it again. I told him that I won't go through with the wedding unless he agrees on uninviting his sister. He believes I'm the asshole for giving an ultimatum. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, not the asshole. Seriously reconsider marrying this man if he finds his sister's behavior to be forgivable. To put it another way, if you end up having kids, is she really someone you want them to have as an aunt? If you are not prepared to put your potential kids through her existence, then give yourself the same boundary. No telling what she would do to their child as a joke. I know a sister-in-law like this who purposely let her niece fall down the stairs because they were chubby and conventionally cute, while hers weren't as cute. Not according to me, but several people had commented. She also did other such jokes before this. I know this is petty and passive-aggressive as hell, but personally, I'd go through with the wedding, but refuse to sign the marriage certificate until the next day when everything was completely over. If at any point his sister did anything as a joke to ruin the day, walk the hell out right then and there. If the certificate isn't signed, you aren't legally married. She will show up at the wedding whether you invite her or not. She will wear white and throw wine on you. When she does, make a scene. A huge scene. Embarrass the living hell out of her and your new husband for having allowed this when you told him this would happen. Then promptly file for divorce. Not the asshole. Don't get hitched to this family. Your fiance has already proven where his loyalties are. Not the asshole. She has proven on two separate occasions that she is willing to destroy your property and physically assault you after making a similar joke. What proof do you have that she will behave herself? I'd have sued her for the bag. That would have put a damper on her jokes. Times like this make me wish for an asshole deposit, like landlords have security deposits for rent. She wants to come to the wedding? Okay, put the cost of the wedding dress and some extra into escrow. She spills wine or makes a scene? That's coming out of her deposit. It won't make your wedding any less ruined, but perhaps the thought of her funding your honeymoon will make you smile. Not the asshole, because it sounds like your sister-in-law has burned her available chances and your fears are justified. Annulment deposit. Okay, fiancé. You don't think she'll actually do anything this time? If she does, annulment. Is he willing to bet his marriage on her behavior? That's what I thought. Okay, fiancé, but if she follows through with her threats, I am making a huge public scene and calling off the wedding in front of everyone. I don't care how far we are in. The paperwork hasn't been filed. I will completely walk out of your life if she does anything. Are you willing to risk this? And now on to the update. First of all, thanks for the feedback. I appreciate it. The final decision is that sister-in-law won't be invited. After the fight I had with my fiancé, he decided to speak with her one-on-one -on -one and make her swear that she won't pull anything. She kept laughing throughout their whole conversation and wasn't taking anything seriously. My fiancé kept trying to convince her to be serious, and the reply that set him off was, And what if I'm not? What will you do? You'll kick me out. And if you kick me out, you know mum and dad will follow me. And then the main talk of your wedding will be about how you kicked your sister out and the drama. That made my fiancé make up his mind and tell her on the spot that she is not invited anymore. She threw a tantrum and said that she is the sister and we can't do this to her. She started crying and bombarding him with texts now about how she was not serious and she was joking and she's sorry. My fiancé told her no. He also decided to limit contact with her to the minimum. My in-laws are of course very angry about this, and as you can imagine, we got called many names for this decision. My fiancé told them that if they have a problem, they are free to not attend either. He told them to shut up or they'll be uninvited next, and he won't keep this conversation any longer. They shut up real quick after that. And edit, my wedding planner has also contacted two security guys for the night. We'll have security and make sure she has no access to the venue. Am I the asshole for changing the names of my babies? 
So I and my husband are in the process of adopting two cute little twins that will be born in January. The biological mother is a young teenage girl, G, female 15, who doesn't want to keep them. She's the daughter of a friend of a friend of ours, and somehow it got through that we wanted to adopt, so her family called us as soon as they knew that she was pregnant. We have been with her all her pregnancy, and even if she doesn't want to be a mother, she will still be able to visit the twins as often as she wants because we live in the same city. As soon as we found out about the baby, we began looking for names, and when it was confirmed that there were going to be twins, a girl and a boy, we decided on the names Ellie and Evan. Last week, however, we were informed that G had chosen names herself, Walter and Agnes. She didn't choose them because of a relative, just because she thought they sounded cool. I don't think I have to mention how outdated the names are, and H and I simply don't like them. But even if the names were great, they are still our babies. We will raise them. G said she never wants to visit them, although she will probably change her mind. We insist on naming them. They will also get our last name and legally be our children, which was decided and agreed on five months ago. G's family is upset with us for not accepting their real names and is threatening to look for new parents. Her sister told us that they are just bluffing and hoping for us to back off. And now in the comments, Agnes might sound like an old lady name, but Ellie sounds like a perpetual toddler. Technically, you do get to name the children, but it really wouldn't hurt to use the bio mom's choices as middle names. Please choose a full name for your daughter. Ellie is cute on a little girl, on a 40-year-old woman, not so much. You're the asshole. They aren't outdated, and they aren't yours. Just don't discuss it. Once you have them, they are yours, and you can name them what you will. This situation is going to get messy. She should not be naming them. She is clearly not ready for an open adoption. You are adopting the kids. You legally get to change their names. If your family friend wanted to keep the babies and name them, then that's on them, but they are letting you adopt them. I feel like it's bad taste to name babies that aren't really yours. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, but I would maybe not start arguments until the paperwork is all signed. Just a, I see how important it is to you. We'll think about it. Because until the ink is dry, I'm sorry to say, those babies aren't yours. You kind of have to respect the family's wishes. If they want to think of the babies as having certain names, they definitely can. If the girl's parents want to F up her life at 15 and force her to keep her babies just because they want control over how they are brought up, they definitely can. Once the babies are legally yours, then it's your rights that have to be respected. And now back up to the post, there is an edit. We are considering the name Ellie Agnes, but we will not name the boy Evan Walter. We are looking for a lawyer right now, and we do have everything in writing. They will become our legal children with no legal connection to G, her family, and their bio dad. Visitations only when H and I agree, which we are planning to do every time right now. We have talked to G's sister, and she told us that G begged her parents not to look for other couples, as she wants us as her baby's parents. She has been telling them that for the last few days. No idea why G's sister didn't tell us that before. Ellie's full name will be Eleanor, to honor H's late sister, but we will call her Ellie. And now on to the update. My husband and I sat down with G and talked to her for a long time. We apologized to her, saying that if we wanted an open adoption, we needed to all work together. She told us, as many Redditors had commented, and as we also thought, that it wasn't her idea to push the name. She apparently chose the names to say goodbye for what could have possibly been, wrote them down in her diary, and her mother found it. We talked to her for a while about the implications of adoption, and asked if that's what she really wants, and she agreed. She's not in the right place to have a baby, let alone two, and raising them would not be in anyone's best interest. She said she does not want to be a mother, but thinks that it's best for the twins to know her, and she will visit occasionally, maybe once every two weeks or more often. G wants to be introduced to the twins as Yemo, which means aunt, but it's also a title used to refer to any girl one or two generations above you. We discussed our possibilities, and agreed that her family being in the life of the twins was not good for their development. 
The main point of the initial post was the naming issue. H and I agreed that we were being inconsiderate and unintentionally harming the twins. As many adoptees have told us in the comments, they loved their names given to them by their bio parents. We thought that it was best to name them together, as we will be their parents, but G will still be a prominent figure in their lives. We have decided on the names Alice Eleanor, Alice because it's cute and classy, Eleanor to honor H's late sister, and Finn Alexander. Finn chosen by G because of a Star Wars character, Alexander because it was on both of our top five names lists. Their Korean names will be decided by a naming expert after their birth, and we three will, again, choose the names together. After the conversation with G about her decision to adopt, we three sat down with her parents and talked about our boundaries. They consider the babies to be shameful and would quote, rather die than accept them as our own blood. Therefore, they will not be a part of their lives. They argued for a short while, but then agreed that it's for the best. When the babies are old enough to decide if they want to meet them, they can, but we don't think they would be a good influence at the time. For the people who asked about the bio dad, he also understands the implications of adoption and is okay with it. He does not wish to know the twins and doesn't want us to tell them who he is. Edit, for all the people telling me that naming experts don't exist and therefore I must be lying, I'm half Korean. My husband is Korean, the twins will grow up in Korea. Therefore, we are following the Korean tradition to go to a person that happens to be called naming expert, and they pick out a list of about 20 names. It has to do with astrology, shamanism, name mixing, and many more things. It's a thing in many Asian countries. From my personal experience, at least in Korea and Japan, and as other Redditors have commented, also in India and China. And now in the comments, yay to proper communication. That's usually the key if all parties are fairly reasonable people. Glad you found a middle ground. And edit to say I love the name Eleanor. It's so amazing when adults actually have proper communication and avoid the drama. But it's actually quite sad that we are surprised when it actually happens. We are too used to miscommunication leading to drama. Alright, and that's where I end the episode for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. These have been some interesting stories, after all. I uh, hope you guys have a bloody good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!